Well, good morning, everyone here at Westway. How are you guys? Hi. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We're so thankful you're here. And for those of you watching online, welcome you guys as well. Um, as you can see, I'm not Pastor Edmund. Um, I wish I could. I know. Uh, I don't have my kettlebells with me. It's in his office. They're too heavy to bring out here. So I need to work on that. Uh, but um, Pastor Edmund did um, catch COVID uh, this week. He wanted me to let you all know that he is doing fine. It was a mild case, and he's actually recovering right now. So we're thankful. So um, today we have a special guest speaker. We have uh, Brother Rico Degatan here to give us the message. And we also have a special uh, presentation uh, after the service uh, from our Westway um, Waymakers. So we want you guys to be able to stay here for that. But um, I'm going to ask you guys to stand and we're going to pray. And then we'll get into uh, worship. Let's all pray. Dear God, we are all gathered here this morning to worship you, God. And on Thanksgiving weekend, we're just want to we just want to be thankful for all the blessings that you have given us here um, and we know that there are some countries in the world who don't have this opportunity so god we want to lift them up this morning um, and we want to pray for those who are struggling to worship you this morning god but uh, here and now we are here and we are thankful for this uh, place that we have that we can come to worship you and god um, we want to pray uh, for pastor edmund as he is uh, recovering from covid and uh, we know that he is getting better, and so we are thankful for that. But we ask uh, your healing hand on him. And anyone else who is suffering from any sicknesses out there, God, uh, we pray for them as well. Uh, God, may you be in this place as we lift up your name, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of the Savior we're going to uh, send our kids off to Waymaker, so let's give them a hand.
morning. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day. I remember when I watched from a TV series a scenario of a family celebrating Thanksgiving Day. All the family, <clears throat> all the family members and friends sitting down gathered around the table. And, it, and in front of them are fine meals prepared by the host, and some food brought by guests to share. Before eating, it's a, it's a tradition that someone would ask what they are being thankful for. One said she is thankful for having a good job. Someone said she's thankful for having good friends. Some, some said for having good family, and so forth, and so on. Coming to the Lord's table is an invitation for remembrance and thanksgiving. If I'm going to ask you, what are you going to thank the Lord for? In this table, we have the bread that represents His body, broken for us, and the grape juice that represents his blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We can thank the Lord for His goodness and mercy. We can thank God for sending His Son to save us from our sins. We can thank God for His forgiveness, for His healing, and for His providence. In this communion, this is the time to pour out our thanksgiving to Him. In Psalms 100, verses 3 to 5, it says, Know the Lord is God. It is He it is who made us, and we are, his, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving 
and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we would like you to know how thankful we are for all, you, for all your love towards us by sending your Son to atone, to atone us for our sins. Jesus is our sacrificial lamb, and we celebrate his death and resurrection. And because of his victory over death, we will overcome death as well and be with you throughout eternity. We cannot thank you enough, and there's not enough words to express our gratitude to you. Thank you, Father, for your unfailing love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
introduced me to your love and you picked up all my pieces put me back together you are the defender of my heart and when I thought I lost me you knew where I left me you introduced me to your love and you picked up So, um, like I said at the beginning, we have a, a guest speaker this morning. We're going to be putting a pause to our heart check series, but we'll continue that next week. Uh, but let's all welcome uh, Brother Rico Degatan to the stage for the message this morning. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Pastor Edmond for inviting me this morning. I'm in front of my uh, computer uh, that, that time when he messaged me about, Rodrigo, I need you. Okay, so when I read my, mes uh, my message and I said, okay, I'll be there. No worry. Take your time. Take your time. Um, I would like to greet one another. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And uh, this month, we also celebrate Happy Pastor's Day. To all our pastors in the churches, uh, Pastor Edmond, when I, in your home, I want to greet you Happy Pastor's Day. And uh, to all the churches here in uh, North America, especially in Toronto, uh, we, um, we are so thankful for our pastors serving the church. Um, it's not easy to be a pastor or be a minister. Uh, I've been there before. I came to this country. I, uh, I know what it is, right? It's like uh, uh, the whole world is in our shoulder. If you don't know the ministry of a pastor, you will not understand what we are uh, being through. And also, I was so encouraged about some of the individuals right now, familiar faces. Uh, as, as some of you didn't know me, uh, this is our second home congregation for the past eight, uh, no, no, not the past eight years. We've been here in this con congregation for eight years, for some of you didn't know me. My children were so small during that time. And my uh, son, my older son, uh, he chose to, to attend in this congregation, but he's not here. But sometimes he's, he's here, sometimes um, stay at home. And um, before I start uh, the message that I want to share with you, um, this is what I call the canned goods. <laughs> uh, because uh, when we are in this situation, last minute, and our professor in the seminary a long time ago told us, oh, just open your cabinet and then get some canned goods inside. So that's what we call the canned goods, okay? But this canned goods is different. This, this canned good is different because today, this weekend is low, it's a Thanksgiving weekend. So the message that I want to share with you, Thanksgiving. 
I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to stick with Wehab to encourage uh, every one of you to thank the Lord for all the blessings that God gave us to be thankful for the rest of our lives. Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that you send us to be our supporter, our guidance in our lives in this world. Father, bless your congregation here at Westway and around the world. May each one of us to serve you more from the best we can. In spite of the world is changing, in spite the virus is still here, but we are ready, Lord, with your help. And we will survive, Lord. And we are so thankful for this thing that uh, happened to us. Guide your servant, Lord, as your words will be our words that we will hear from you this morning. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I would like to uh, share to you two passages from the, um, the uh, epistle of Apostle Paul in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And uh, if you have the Bible with you, Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonians, he said, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And also he um, wrote to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 6, and he said to them these words, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Bless the Lord, the Lord Jesus, for reading and hearing uh, from the words of Apostle Paul. Being thankful is not just dependent on how much you must be thankful for. It is based on what you choose to be thankful for. And the question for all of us is this. So what are you thankful for? There are so many things to be thankful for. Gratitude is not just the feeling people get after something good happened to them. It is a way of thinking that takes practice and challenging work to make it part of their everyday behavior. It is often easy to forget many of the trivial things we must be grateful for in our lives. But it is important not to take anything for granted. The uh, 35th U.S. President John F. Kennedy said, As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. And also, uh, another man said, the Jewish-Romanian-born American author, philosopher, and humanist, Ellie Wiesel said, For me, every hour is grace. And I feel gratitude in my heart each time I can meet someone and look at his or her smile. And also another man say, said these words. He is an American novelist and short story writer named William Faulkner. said, gratitude is a quality similar to electricity. It must be produced and discharged and used up in order to exist at all. There is another man by the name uh, Tecumseh. Maybe you are, you, you are familiar with this man. Uh, he is a Shawnee warrior chief who organized a Native American confederacy in an effort to create an autonomous Indian state and stop white settlement in the Northwest Territory in modern-day Great Lakes region. He said, uh, Tecumseh said, when you arise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. So there's another one, maybe you know this man, Willie Nelson, uh, American country musician said, when I started counting my blessings, my whole life turned around. Is this happening to you too? <laughs> when the Lord bless you, 
Did you remember him? Or just like when, when the time comes only comes to you, then that's the time you know the Lord. No, we, we, we as a, a children of God, we should be thankful every day in our lives. And um, the American football, uh, professional football player by the name Ralph Marston in 1929 said, I you know I like this what he said make it ha make it a habit to tell people thank you you know two words thank you to express your appreciation sincerely and without the expectation of anything in return truly appreciates those around you and you will soon find many others around you truly appreciate life and you will find that you have more of it so that is the power of the two words, thank you. It can sometimes be difficult to realize what you can be thankful and grateful for. When the world seems full of challenges and hurdles, you might need some inspiration on the things that you can be grateful for. Seeing that great gratitude is linked to happiness. And you have more reason to practice thankfulness every once in a while. First, why should you, we be thankful? I uh, you know Apostle Paul always wrote, you know, about these letters in, in, um, in Europe. And I, will, uh, I, will, I would like to, re, uh, to re, uh, recall again uh, his uh, first verse that I read earlier, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. He said to them, to the Thessalonians, give thanks, number one, in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know what? I can relate with this verse. Because last February, I went to uh, Greece. I went to Thessaloniki, where Apostle Paul wrote this letter. I came from Toronto that time to uh, Munich, Germany. And then from Munich, Germany to Thessaloniki. And uh, when I uh, reached the Thessalonica, uh, Thessaloniki International Airport, it's not like what we have here in North America. There is no like a tube that will help you to go walking up to the inside the terminal. But in Thessaloniki, it's different. You have to land in the land. <laughs> you have to walk in the ground. You know, it's like in Israel when I've been there last uh, 2018. It's like you have to walk. <laughs> And then there is a bus waiting for you to bring you to the terminal. So I have a happy feeling when I uh, reach this place. Because for so many years, I'm dreaming to be in these countries like Greece, Turkey, Italy, Israel, Egypt, Jordan, you know. But now it comes to me in, in reality, one country at a time. God gave all of these things to me in a certain time. After 36 years of dreaming to come to these countries, and God gave it to me one country at a time. And now there are three countries that I've been visited for the past 28 years. I've been in this country, and uh, two more years, uh, uh, two more countries, I'm sorry, uh, next year. So if God willing, I'm going to Egypt and Jordan and to the Philippines in July next year. So God gave me a lot of things that I cannot even imagine. And be, I am forever grateful for what the Lord has given me because of I serve him well. Even though I'm not working full-time as a pastor or minister, but I, deep inside, I am his servant. I can do for the best I can to help my co-ministers, pastors, anywhere they want me to, to, uh, to help, then I'm willing to help. Um, as all of you know that I am a support worker in, in my profession right now. I've been doing this for over 15 years. I'm a, one of the members in the nursing department, but I'm happy for what I'm doing right now because I am thankful for all the circumstances that God gave it to me. Even though sometimes when you come to this country, you have to change vocation. It's hard for you to keep on your job if you want to make money to support your family. In my case, I have to find a way to support my family. So that God put me in that. But I'm still do, doing the best, the best I can of my first love. Ministry is my first love. 
As Paul said, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This verse is applied to every one of us. And, uh, but why exactly should you be thankful? How exactly does a little gratitude improve your life? There have been multiple fascinating studies that prove multiple links between thankfulness and positive factors in life. But I want to highlight two of them here. First, being grateful is related to an increase in your happiness. One of the most detailed studies on thankfulness was conducted in 2003 by Robert Emmons and Michael McCullough. They monitored the happiness of a group of people after having asked the following question. There are many things in our lives, both large and small, that we might be grateful about. Think back over the past week and write down on the lines below up to five things in your life that you are grateful or thankful for. So the study showed that people who are encouraged to think of things they are grateful for are approximately 10% happier than those who are not. A 10% increase in happiness because of practicing gratitude is excessively big in my opinion. Second, being thankful is linked to improve quality of sleep. Even Jesus, our Lord, needed time to rest in John 4, 6. Scriptures tells us that God never sleeps. Uh, the book of Psalms uh, mentioned that in chapter 121, verse 4. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleep. So the Lord is our great shepherd always keeping watch over us so that we can experience sweet and pleasant sleep. Psalms 4.8 In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone. Lord, make me dwell in safety. So in addition, another study reviewed the influence of gratitude on the quality of sleep. This study tested whether individual differences in gratitude are re related to sleep quality. So gratitude predicted greater subject, subjected sleep quality and sleep duration and less sleep latency and daytime dysfunction. So these results were found after studying 400 people of all ages. Long story short, Thinking about things to be thankful for and grateful for before going to bed is linked to a better quality of sleep. This is also why it is good to maintain a gratitude journal right before going to sleep. Did you do this sometimes or always or never? <laughs> you know, it's good to document sometimes to, to write something so not to forget things. What is something for which you are grateful? For example, you can be grateful for someone smiling at you somewhere in the streets or somewhere in, you know, or around you or whenever you are. For a beautiful sunset, like what we have this morning, or for some nice music that you recently listened to. If you are a lover of music, you will appreciate the music that you are remembering when you are a kid, when you are small, you know. Teenagers, you know. I'm still remembering those songs when I was 14 years old. I grew up in Manila, you know, until I become 16, and then before I came here at the age of 27, I'm still remembering the music of the 80s. The, uh, during the, when I was five years old, when I hear those music, wow, I remember where I am that time. I was playing in the streets of Manila, you know, in our uh, house there a long time ago. So that is the, the effect, the, uh, the power of, of memory. You know? And um, whatever comes to your mind is okay. It makes you happy. You know? Because uh, I would like to, to share with you some of the list of things to be thankful and grateful for. And unfiltered and sorted randomly, and some are serious and heavy, while others might seem 
a bit random, weird, and sometimes even funny. So several items on this list might not even be relevant to your situation, but I tried to include something of everything. So first, thankful for having a loving dog. If, you, if you're a dog lover, pets lover, you will appreciate the pet that you have. You know? My daughter bought a big, big dog. Half lab, half German Shepherd. Oof. It's hard to manage. Big dog, black. You know, but he is a lab she is a loving dog. Every time I, I came home, my wife, my, uh, my son, my daughter, oh, you can see the waggling tail. Rap, 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 you know, and try to, 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 to jump on you. I feel good when I, when, I, when I experience that. What are you thankful for? Thankful for having a caring parent? What are you thankful for? Thankful for the honorable deeds that exist in this world? What are you thankful for? So thankful for the honorable deeds that exist in this world. So we live in a crazy world. And it's far too easy to only see the negative around us. I am so grateful every time I see someone do a good deed for someone else. Even a small gesture can have an enormous impact. Whether it is helping a blind person across the street. Carrying groceries for the elderly or even holding the door open for someone. These virtuous deeds rekindle my belief in the good of humanity. It is easy to get bogged down by society, but opening your eyes and seeing the good can make you thankful that there are still good people in the world. For thankful for enjoying time with uh, our family. This is, this is the list would not be complete without a specific, a specific mention of our family. Fifth, thankful for the beautiful sunlight. What are you thankful for? Winter is coming. <laughs> I hope we're going to have a lot of sunlight during the winter time. <laughs> it's impossible sometimes, you know. So we have to be thankful for a beautiful sunlight. Thankful for the many good memories in our lives. This is something that I am personally incredibly grateful forever for in my life. I keep an entire memory journal dedicated to remembering the many good memories of my life during my travels in Europe and in the Middle East. I find that remembering good memories helps me maintain a happy mind, content life, happy man. Thinking back about the time that I laugh my ass off about something silly brings a smile to my face. This is something I try to do daily. Whenever I find a moment to stand still and think about my life. Seven, thankful for having a roof above my head. What are you thankful for? I am grateful for knowing that I am not stuck in the house but safe in the house. While others out there cannot be so lucky. Either not having a roof over their head or not feeling safe in their own home. Imagine the past tragedy in, in Florida, you know? And what about us here in Toronto? We are fortunate. We don't experience those kind of calamities that they have. The uh, knowing how to refrain my thoughts when I am feeling rubbish help. Thankful for experiencing the struggles in life. I don't believe that all of us can, can experience struggles in life. I think all of us as a human being can experience struggles in, struggles in life. If you will not experience struggles in life, you, you, you are not like us. <laughs> Humans experience struggles in life. Love for those... Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, love is different. Love is very weird sometimes. Uh, circumstances, you know. So, what are you thankful for? Something that I am grateful for our, for our struggles. To me, they are a gift. Without the struggles, you will not be mature. You will not be a real man, a real person. Struggles is like, it's like a challenge to yourself. How to stand on your feet in your foot, in your feet on the ground, you know? Rather than living a life of luxury and ease, my struggles over the years have taught me value, wisdom, and compassion. They have led me to spiritual growth. 
the greater the challenge I face, the more I learn, the more I progress, and the stronger I become, for that I am forever grateful. Nine, thankful for being able to go on walks and walking every day at my, work, my workplace. I love, the nat- I, I love nature. I love to see nature, trees, green, uh, different colors of flowers of trees. I love, I love nature. What are you thankful for? I am grateful to have my health and the fact that I can still spend time in nature when I'm away on my vacation. When I saw the mountains of Greece traveling from northern Greece, Macedonia, and then going down to the south in central Greece, in Delphi, and I saw a lot of different places and mountains covered with the snow. If I can show you the pictures, but I, I, you know, I don't have time to put it in PowerPoint, you won't believe the places where I go. From north, central, and south of Greece for, for I don't know, for, for five days I've been in Greece and uh, five days in Turkey. So I, I cannot believe, I cannot explain until today, I, all of those experiences still in my mind. I saw all of those places, especially when, I, um, when we go to Athens, you know, and I saw indescribable scenario of places that, I don't know if how many of you went to Greece. I don't know if you've been to Greece. If you didn't been to Greece, go and, and, and visit the country one, one time. So the, um, I am grateful for, for all of these things because God gave these opportunities and circumstances not, not to all people. Maybe, I don't know, some people doesn't like traveling. My wife doesn't like traveling. Every time I ask her, can you come with me? She said, no, give, 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 give me the, the airfare ticket and I will spend it in my shopping. <laughs> She doesn't want. I said, how many times I'm going to, to traveling, but she doesn't want to come with me? I said, I'm always going by myself. What about you? I'm happy to stay home. I don't like this, like 13 hours sitting in the plane. I don't like that. I don't like so many people around me. I want to sit in, my, in the house and cook, enjoy my time. That's all. I said, what kind of, that's my life. That's what she said to me. Okay, I respect that, you know. But I'm going to go. I have my own life too. <laughs> I have to go and see, see places, you know. Go ahead. Make your life. Go ahead, you know. So, okay, I got your, I got your go signal. Yeah! <laughs> you know, and then I'm just traveling with other pastors from the United States, you know. So I'm not only alone, but I have so many Christians with me. So whether it is taking time the time to watch a sunset in Athens, Greece, overlooking the Pantheon and the Marseille from our hotel. I saw the sunset and the sunrise, dinner and breakfast. I said, oh, I, I will not forget that memory you know, until today. Especially when I was in Kusadasi in Ephesus in Western Turkey, one of the seven churches in, uh, in Revelation. I saw the sunset. Beautiful, you know, because the hotel is just close to the, uh, to the sea, to the Aegean Sea. And uh, a lot of people are saying that that is the possible location when Apostle Paul traveling from Ephesus going to Jerusalem, that place. So I was there. So, and then I can experience that, oh, Apostle Paul lives in my mind when I was there, you know. And especially uh, when um, I'm spending time in, on, uh, at the beach in Jaffa, in Tel Aviv, in Israel, in 2018. Soak. <laughs> and then I just, my uh, Canadian towel, uh, the flag, Canadian flag with me. And then just, and I can uh, feel the, uh, the, uh, the waves of the Mediterranean Sea. You know? And I said, my God, thank you for all of these things. You know? It was in 2018. So those are the... The, uh, the memory that God sometimes in, in, you know, gave it to us, but we have to remember that everything comes from us or from God is given to us is from God. And we have to be thankful for that. And um, nature o- o- offers such peace of mind. That's what I'm, 
I experience. When I see traveling from northern uh, Greece, going to the south, to the central uh, Greece, I saw the mountains covered with snow. During that time, we're traveling because it's winter time. All of the mountains that we pass by covered with the snow. I said, oh my God, this is what they're experiencing during the winter time in Greece. You know, covered a lot of snow there. And I said, I, said, I feel good, you know, peace of mind when I saw it. And um, the, uh, the windows in, uh, inside the bus, it's full of, <laughs> you know, because the cold outside and warm inside, and you can see that you have to wipe it all the time so you can see the, the outside part. I always, you know, clean the window. I said, oh, my God, look at that. You know, if I have a good camera, I will take a picture on that one because it's too blurry, you know. So then um, as we, we can all get so busy with the day to day, it is nice to unwind Take some deep breaths and focus on the beauty that nature has to offer. And 11, thankful for getting to spend time with our wives and husbands. Don't forget that. You know, spend time with your loved ones. This is the one that I personally wanted to include in this list. I'm extremely grateful for the fact that my wife and I somehow found its other in this world with over 7 billion people. Love is the key to happiness, how to be happy. If I will tell you how my wife saw me, <laughs> you won't believe. Saw me in the picture. And then that started of our writing. During that time, there is no Facebook and Twitter or anything. You have to write. Pen pal. <laughs> so that is our love story. So thankful for appreciating spiritual and worship songs. I am I'm a music lover. I study music in the Manila, Manila Bible Seminary also. I have also a certificate for that. I love music. And I appreciate everything, especially spiritual music, worship songs. This is another one that I personally wanted to add to the list. If you still have your hearing, then you should be grateful for the beauty of sound. Okay? The fact that multiple sound waves combine form music that can carry emotion, tension, and excitement is something that we often take for granted. Music has the power to move. I personally experience this occasionally when a song sucks me in and takes me on a journey. This journey always ends up putting a smile on my face and sometimes even brings me to tears. Tears of happiness. The fact that we can hear and appreciate sounds and music is something to be thankful for. Thirteen, thankful for getting to be vulnerable. What are you thankful for? I am grateful for all the connections I can make when I let my guard down and become vulnerable. Being able to use my vulnerability as a superpower to share my story with others provides healing in the heart of others. It gives them strength and comfort knowing they are not alone, especially the elderly people I work with in my job, you know. I always tell my story to them. You know, sometimes they ask me, how, can, how did you get here in this country? The cold country of Canada, the land of ice and snow. Because I grew up in the Philippines with hot weather. Only two weather we have, wet and dry. Six months wet and six months dry. We don't have winter there. We don't have sp spring there. We don't have autumn there. Only two, two weathers only. And then um, this brings me joy, fulfillment, and purpose in my life, in my heart. I am grateful for the connection I have made through being vulnerable and sharing my story to them. Fourteen, thankful for the not so great stuff in life. I'm not a materialistic person. I don't like earring, like ne necklace, gold rings, anything. I'm not. I, I, I'm not in on that. But if people likes it, I you know that's their decision. But I'm just a simple man. Just give me clothes and food. And that's all. I'm happy with that. And um, what are you thankful for? This may sound strange, but I am grateful for the not so great stuff in my life. They are my greatest teachers. Fifteen, thankful for all the farmers and drivers who nourish us with fresh food. I am so fortunate I'm still eating banana in this country. Banana, Canada cannot produce banana. Banana cannot live in this country, a cold country, we, you know, we, I'm so thankful that banana came on time in our table fresh and look at the freshness of the banana. And I can eat the banana like, 
like in the Philippines, I said, how this banana came with, in this country with that kind of freshness? How they can do, how they do that? That is the power of God. It came fresh to your table. That's why we have to be thankful for the farmers and the drivers who nourish us with this fresh food. Even the prices of the food in Toronto right now, it's rocketing high, you know? So what are you thankful for? 16, thankful for technology, what we have. We have live streaming. How many? 25 years ago, we don't have like this. Before pandemic, we don't have this. Or we're so fortunate. A lot of people around the world are watching us. In the Philippines, in Europe, even though they are not here with us, but they are watching us, listening to us, following us every Sunday. That's the power of technology. We, they are fellowshiping with us, worshiping with us through live streaming and breaking bread with us when the pastor and the elders of the church and the leaders lead us to this holy sacrament. And what are you thankful for? I am grateful for technology. I like technology. Cell phones that keeps me connected to my family, colleagues and friends during the pandemic. Laptops and iPads that enable video connection via Zoom, provide mental breaks, you know, watch videos and even apps for journaling and writing. I love to write. I love to sit down in front of my computer and and I don't know, no one is watching me why I'm doing that, but I have a lot of things in my mind to put it in that word processing. Only me knows what I put it there. And it's going to be my, my joy when I share those knowledge when the time comes. YouTube, headphones that let me listen to music as a backdrop to serious activities, but also music as a distraction to the crisis impacting us all. Second, things to be thankful for in 2022. Thank God. Even the virus is not so actively this year, but it's still in, in, in infecting a lot of people, but it's not like 2020 and 2021. Apostle Paul said to the Philippians, when I was in Philippi, in northern Greece, I always remember the, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, you know, less, uh, message to the Philippians about the place that exists during that time. I, we remember we, uh, we visited Lydia and the actual location of her baptism. And we, um, we visited Alexander the Great's father's uh, burial place. Until today, they still keep, keep the place and, make, and they, be, they, they keep that as a national treasury for the country of Greece. So they, they preserve those places. He said, do not be anxious about anything. Don't, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. For me, 2020, 2021, but not 2022, I will not include that year to the past two years, was not the best years for me in my 28 years here in Canada. For me only, but maybe about, I don't know about you. It gave us COVID-19, isolation, extreme weather, disasters, and political upheaval all in two bad years. I was in Thessaloniki in February 24 when Putin invaded Ukraine. I didn't know. I was in, in the city of Thessaloniki. My wife messaged me, are you okay? Putin already invaded Ukraine. You are close to Ukraine because Greece is above on the eastern, northern east, eastern of Greece. Don't worry. I am in a good place. <laughs> Enjoying the hot tub in my hotel. <laughs> so don't worry, you know, just pray, right? So maybe perhaps the worst year in our memories, maybe. So we could simply be thankful in 2022 that it is no longer 2020 and 21. So even, but even 2020 had many things to be thankful for. And that, we are all survived the virus and we are still alive and breathing. Amen for that? We are still breathing and walking and healthy. 
A lot of people died. How many people died in the world? Maybe over 2 million of people around the world, or 4 million people around the world who died in this virus. We are fortunate. We are still alive and breathing. So, but even 2020 had many things to be thankful for. But it is actually more important to be thankful for the blessings you have been when times are tough than when they are going well. So let's start this list with the important things in our lives, the ones that we often take for granted. Then we will move on to small items that might seem important but can often brighten your day. So if, if, uh, Philippians 4, 6, I will, I will repeat. The Apostle Paul, Paul said to the Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in every, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Before you ask God, you have to praise him first. You have to honor and worship him first above everything. Being surrounded by family and friends, your children having access to clean drinking, uh, drinkable water, not being hungry and having an abundance of food, having a roof over your head and safe place to live. Your parents who raised and molded you in the person you are today. Kindness from strangers and random acts of kindness. Mistakes that help you grow as a person. Modern conveniences that were not available even a century ago. Electricity, indoor plumbing, air conditioning, furnace, etc. Having full use of your senses like eyesight, hearing, and taste. A new book. Not being hungry and having an abundance of food. The ability to learn something new. The kindness of strangers. Feeling of acceptance. Making a final payment on a loan and mortgage. A nice hot shower. Healthy foods, even the price is high. Equality and diversity. The, the voice of a friend or relative you have not seen and heard in a long time. The ability to work from home in your pajamas during the pandemic. A beautiful sunrise. The sound of a song you love. Access to the medication you need to stay healthy. Free time on your to-do list. A hot cup of tea. The sincere appreciation of others. New clothes. Respect from others, paydays, the feeling of un un uncontrollable laughter, teachers who spend the time, extra time to give you the knowledge you have today, the ability to learn from your mistakes, freedom of speech, happy people who make us happier simply by their presence, the feeling of accomplishment when you stop pro procrastinating and complete the task you have been avoiding, the freedom of choice, Foreign cultures we can visit and learn from. Meeting up with your friends for lunch or dinner, but being accountable for your actions. Trying new things, even if it is simple, like a new cup of coffee, you know, old photographs, technology for allowing us to stay closely connected with friends and family, regardless of distance. Netflix, you know, and other streaming services options that provide an abundance of viewing actions, options, sorry. A safe landing after a rough plane ride, positivity even when things are difficult, visiting unfamiliar places, especially ones you have always dreamed of seeing, getting a full night's sleep, having a morning routine that gives you energy throughout your day, the weekend and the long weekend, happy memories from your childhood, and unseasonably warm winter day, real honesty, people who care about the environment, human rights, and animals, meditation and devotion, and so on. So many, so many lists. And um, a, great, a gratitude list like this is nice, but what can it really do for you? This list can be used at a time like Thanksgiving when we all stop and think about all the things we should be thankful for. But how about for the rest of the year? The answer is that by itself it does little, but if it is helps inspire you to create your own gratitude list, it can be quite valuable. Gratitude can transform you. It can pull you from the vortex of negativity that is sucking the life out of you and give you a renewed sense of purpose and joy. 
So, one of the best ways to practice gratitude is by journaling. Do it, if you want. At its simplest form, this gratitude journaling, it taking time out every day to think about and write down things for which you are grateful. Count all your blessings one by one. It can be as simple as writing three things you are grateful for on post-it notes every single day or a bit more formal and guided like using our 90-day gratitude journal. Simply taking time every day to think about and write out the things you are grateful for is one of the biggest ways to improve your happiness and overall quality of life. So if getting ahead at work and making more money, if we are making a lot of money sometimes, studies shows that above a family income of 7, 75,000 per year, money has zero effect on happiness. Whatever money you make, if you are not happy, it, it, it will not help you. You should be happy for what you have. Thankfulness and gratitude is the answer of all of these things. So I highly encourage you to make a habit out of making a habit out of daily gratitude journaling. It does not matter if you write it on a yellow stickies, add it to an existing bullet journal or use our book, The Holy Scriptures, as a framework. Spending daily time thinking about gratitude will improve your life in a way few other things can. So finally, I would like to leave to you, Paul, a uh, message to the Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, a final word on gratitude and thankfulness. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. I hope you enjoyed this list of things to be thankful for, and hopefully you will consider making a list of your own Writing out your personal feelings of gratitude daily can do quite a bit to improve your life. Hopefully, you will consider journaling your gratitude feelings every day. And remember that being thankful or grateful is not just something for Thanksgiving, but something that should be practiced every day of your life. Realizing the blessings that abound in your life will make you happier physically and healthier is spiritually. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Praise the Lord for each one of us, and, we will see, and I will see you again in the future. Thank you so much for your listening. God bless. Thank you, uh, Brother Rico, for that um, awesome message. Um, it is Thanksgiving, and um, I guess one of the things I'm thankful for is the Toronto Blue Jays reminding me what heartbreak actually feels like. So thank you, Toronto Blue Jays. Um, before we leave you guys uh, with the service today, we want to just, uh, like I said in the beginning, our uh, uh, Waymakers group has put together uh, a special choir presentation. I don't know if you guys have heard them the past couple of months during the service. You can hear singing downstairs, that was them. So they've put together um, a video choir uh, presentation. So we're gonna give that to you guys as a Thanksgiving gift. And um, yeah, so have a great Sunday and we'll leave you guys with the video. <laughs> 